Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and this week, weekend, I finished reading Nature Stories by Jules Renard. This edition is uh, the New York uh, NYRB Classics edition. Great white, you know, I always love the inside colors, they're so fantastic. <laughs> you could decorate a house with these books, um, like your, your wall colors with these books. Uh, this edition is translated by Douglas Parme. Uh, the illustrations, which are legitimately amazing, Throughout the text, um, these ones are by Pierre Bonnard. Uh, it sounds like there was at one point some of these stories, which had been published in like little uh, periodicals or as other like stories or story collections, some of those were at one point illustrated by uh, the great artist Toulouse Lautrec. But for for sort of Renard's final edition, he had a, a uniform illustrator across them. So. This is just an absolute delight to read. It's a it's a sort of like a bestiary, except there's not the it's not a series of fables the way that often a bestiary is constructed where like there's instruction uh, and, and like a moral to the lessons about and the stories about the different animals. Uh, this one has those, <laughs> but they're not necessarily lessons for humans in terms of like you know, uh, listen to your parents type uh, uh, morals. It's more about like, reflect on how you interact with other living things and, and how you interact with and appreciate nature. Um, I had I had picked this up, I can't remember who on booktube talked about it, maybe it was Matthew at Mayberry Book Club who, who talked about this at one point or read a, a passage from it at one point. And then when I did a video on Goblin Market earlier this month, Jason at Byways in uh, Brooklyn I was in Bookland, uh, had commented like some of the uh, passages from Goblin Market resembled a, a medieval uh, bestiary. And so I thought, oh, like that's a good point. And so I dug out this copy uh, and I I've gone through it with my daughters who, my younger one especially, is just absolutely fascinated by it. It's really cool. The, the stories for the most part are set in the French countryside. Renard had grown up there. He later went to Paris and became successful in Paris. He sort of married uh, well in terms of uh, having a, a, an enormous amount of wealth uh, from his wife's family to be able to invest in in like a, uh, I think it was a magazine or a periodical where he could then be successful and also publish his writing there. And so later on he purchased sort of a country home that he would go out to and spend the entire summer there. And then he would, you know, spend the winter months and the colder months in Paris. And you can tell he just, he loves these animals that he's interacting with. He loves uh, thinking about them through different lenses, through a lens of, of, of a hunter or a, a sportsman, but also through, through the lens of like someone who lives there, someone who lives with these animals, someone who spends time with them and appreciates their little quirks and personalities. So for example, he has the weasel and he goes, the weasel, poor but clean and distinguished looking. She hops to and fro across the road from one ditch and one hole to another. She's a teacher giving private lessons. Like who thinks of a weasel that way? That's such a, we have this whole, we, we suddenly shift our entire picture of what a weasel is. And we have this whole perception that's so funny and charming. Um, some of his stories are a little bit longer. He has the peacock and this one's particularly uh, fun. And it's got a great illustration of a peacock here. It must be his wedding day. It should have been yesterday. He was all dressed up and ready. He was only waiting for his bride. She didn't turn up. She won't be long now. He's gorgeous, strutting around like an Indian prince, wearing the customary offerings. Love is enhancing the splendor of his feathers. His crest is quivering like the string of a lyre. The bride still hasn't come. And so it, it goes on. He's like, the wedding will be, he's finally, he realized, the wedding will be tomorrow. Not knowing how to spend the rest of the day, he makes his way towards the terrace, goes up the steps like an officiant going up the steps of a temple. He lifts the tail of his gown, which is weighed down by the gaze of those who've been unable to take their eyes off him. He repeats the ceremony once again. <laughs> and so we just have these, we get all these pictures of animals that are so comical and so funny. And there's a sense of whimsy and joy about them. You, you, you have the sense of, even though Renard is writing these as an adult, um, and he really seems to be writing these in sort of the last 15 years of his life in large part. He's, he's remembering what it was like as a child to interact with these creatures and what it is like now as, as an adult to do that and return sort of to his childhood. And I think that's sort of the perception I had as I've 
I haven't read all of them to my daughters, but as I was reading them, that was sort of the, the feeling I had was this idea of, I'm not only reading these and laughing at all of the jokes as an adult or, but I'm, 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 I'm in, laughing at the jokes that my daughters are enjoying and the pictures that they're enjoying. And it's making me think back to what I used to think of these creatures when I was a child. Um, and it's not just animals. So, so he has the animals, he has fish, he has this entire sequence of passages about hunting that become very, very disturbing. And it's intentionally that way. He feels, he writes about people going hunting or fishing and then he writes about like, what would it feel like to get shot, you know, in your buttocks? You know, what would it feel like to, to have your entire world suddenly turned upside down and be wondering where, you know, one member of your partridge family is and why that member hasn't come home yet. And so he anthropomorphizes the animals to a degree that, that really is interesting and fascinating. Um, but this is a passage from the wood, and it's all from the person point of view of these woods. Come in, my friend. Here everything is cool and shade. A few specks of light. Look at that beetle on that cow pat, like a needle shining on a thick cravat. Shoo those midgets away and enjoy briefly their puny orchestra. This little wood holds the bird's prisoner in its painted bird cage. What a great description. Listen to that blackbird who can play on his flute better than you. Look at that birch in the distance. He's just hiding behind the oaks, like a man in a light cloak, anxious to get away. And as for you, claiming to be free and a poet, confess that if a rural policeman turns up, you'll be the first to greet him. Don't be afraid. What you can hear is a secret spring rippling free of these Lilliputian bramble branches. There's nobody there. The little wood is yours. I'm lending it to you. I'm lending you all the delights it can offer. I'm lending you its little narrow path, which you can only go along single footed. And I'm lending you to be your servants, its elegant trees, which will pass to one another their parasol of leaves to protect you from the sun. But if you want to enjoy the charm of this little wood properly, go now and again to its border, push the branches apart and look out there at the grassless meadows, that blinding road, and that pointed bell tower melting in the sun. Out there, everything's burning. Quick, close up the branches. And I think that just gives a taste of, of what this book, Nature Stories, has to offer. It's short, it's only about 170 pages. You know, a good number of pages are taken up with these glorious black and white illustrations. Uh, and some of the stories are very short. Um, there, there are passages like this where the green lizard, beware of the paint. The grass snake, whose stomach has dropped that bit of diarrhea? <laughs> and so it's, it's a quick read, but it's a book that I know I'm going to return to. I, I'm so delighted that I found it um, and I acquired a copy. And it's one that I know I'm going to return to for myself, but also it, it's one that my daughters have enjoyed so much. I'm going to keep reading it with them. They thought it was so interesting. Uh, they, they love the pictures, but they also love the quirky little descriptions. And we talk about what they mean and why we might think that. Um, and and so it, it's a book I'll return to. It's a book I'm going to return to with my kids, you know, generations forward, maybe with grandkids or something. And so I just, I can't recommend this book enough. I'm so happy I read it. And uh, just, you know, thanks for listening. If you've ever read this or if you have other sort of uh, bestiary adjacent works that are real delights in your life. I'd be happy to hear about them. So thank you everyone. Bye.